Hello. Namaste. I just want to talk briefly about the matrix and like we have to know what the matrix is before we can prepare to get out of the matrix. So I liken it to like bad relationships, right? Like you don't know if you're in a bad relationship because you're in it, you know, and people can see from the outside, you know, they say, oh, well, your husband or wife is belittling you or, you know, they're mentally and emotionally abusing you or they're always criticizing you, but you don't see it when you're in the relationship, right? You're kind of blind to it for reasons, you know, because you want to be in that situation, you want to stay with that person, you know, so the matrix is kind of like the same thing, unless we can kind of like step away from it, we can't really recognize that we're in it. And especially if we're like succumbing to our emotions all the time, or if we have a lot of like mental chatter, we can't see that we're essentially inside this giant mouse trap, right? And, you know, the, the current situation that we're in, it, it's even like more intimidating as we progress into the 2020s and beyond. And, you know, the people that are not already prepared or currently preparing find themselves like even in an even more precarious situation you know, it's especially challenging out there. I mean, even like this idea of like jobs, work, et cetera. I mean, it's not like it was 50 years ago. And, you know, there is no such thing as go out, you know, get a job and stay at that job all your life and then go into retirement and you're pretty much set, you know, and I'm not saying that that system is wrong. That system worked for a lot of people and a lot of people, you know, did pretty well on that system. I'm just saying it is a system and it's not working anymore. There is no such thing as, you know, go out, get a job, go into retirement, and it's pretty much it. Um, you know, the world that we're living in is changing. It already has changed. And it's only going to be more difficult for the people that, you know, want to stay in the system. Now, there's people that are going to stay in the system that are going to do very well, um, you know, but there's people that are in the system right now that have, you know, they're trying to get out that it's getting worse and worse for them, right? So we have to recognize first what the system is, what it's essentially a matrix, what the matrix is, and then we can make a plan to get out. So what people normally do, instead of like simplifying their life, or we as people, as humans, instead of making it easier, we make it more difficult, right? Instead of appreciating what we have, we always want more. And instead of working less to have more time, which essentially is a finite commodity, we work more so we can have more material things, which essentially only diminish or, you know, disintegrate over time. You know, and it was actually Jesus that said, you know, we have to live with a, a simple eye. You know, if it's simple, everything is bright. We shine. So essentially we find ourselves more and more enslaved, more and more as part of this matrix. The matrix essentially is a self-imposed prison that we create around ourselves. And again, only by seeing the bigger picture, only by stepping away and seeing the big picture, do we actually know what we're working with, what we're actually up against here. You know, it's essentially a self-created trap. And, and we have to see clearly what we've actually buried ourselves under, you know. So there's actually three things I'll discuss today of, you know, things that are part of this matrix. And, you know, there's many more than just three, you know, is this, we're talking about this completely, you know, self-imposed man-made systems everywhere you know that we have created us as a planet 
But I'm just going to go into three things on how, you know, what I think are personally either the, the major things or, you know, rather simple things that you can start to do now to start to break away. And the first thing I want to talk about is the materialism, because I think materialism in general, like we work, we consume, we die. All we do is we consume, we consume, we consume, we consume. And if you, you know, just sit in your house right now, you know, when was the last time you looked around your house and noticed that things, you know, the things that you've purchased, but you've never actually used, you know, how many different gadgets do you have that maybe you've never used, or maybe you've used them once and you never use them again, or how many things are you currently using that? are not, you know, they're not necessary or they don't serve any purpose at all. You know, how many knickknacks do you have or pictures or plastic gadgets or kids toys or pets toys, for example, uh, you know, or how many, how much of an overabundance of clothing do you have or shoes? You know, I, I think some people have enough shoes in their house that they can open a small shoe store, you know, and Yes, okay, I agree. You know, maybe you need the winter boots and maybe you need the summer flip-flops. But, you know, I'm saying that, you know, there's really people that have like a pair of shoes with each individual outfit. You know, is it necessary? Is it is it something you really need as like a need? A need, you know, and, and this is another thing. Needs and wants are different. <laughs> You know, what you need is something that you require for survival. And what you want is something that is aesthetically pleasing or that it pleases you. It's a desire. So materialism essentially is the first trap that we find ourselves in. And a lot of the time, the purchases that we're making are emotional purchases, right? They are trying to fulfill some kind of emotional need. And in yoga, we talk about santosha, which is contentment. It's just being content with what you have. Because if you're fulfilled on the inside, you realize that you don't need anything externally to make you happy. You know, you have all the peace and happiness on the inside. So everything external is just a plus. You know, if you have like uh, an electric toaster maker, it's just like a plus but it's not a necessity and you can definitely live without it, for example. The second thing I want to go into is the medical system. Uh, the medical system in general, you know, you, we have to ask ourselves, are you dependent on medicines? And, you know, I'm not talking about like medicines. If you have, you know, a lifelong disease that is not curable and you are, really required. I mean, there are sicknesses, there are diseases that really require, you know, medicinal um, solutions on a long-term basis. And I'm not talking about those. I'm not talking about, um, you know, something to, you know, that is possibly working as a cure or et cetera, et cetera. But I'm talking about the medicines that people take simply due to poor diet and lifestyle choices. So many of the diseases that we have today are curable. And in fact, they have been cured by many people in a holistic way. And I'm talking about things like obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, constipation, any digestive issues, skin issues a lot of the times are relatively easy to cure, uh, bacterial infections, any pain in the physical body, like lower pain, for example, sometimes lower back pain is caused by constipation, which we know that we can remedy ourselves uh, most of the time, or mental and emotional issues. And most people think, you know, the mental and emotional thing, they think that, you know, they have, they have anxiety and they have to go to the doctor and get prescribed some anxiety medication, or they have depression and they need to go to the doctor and, you know, and take Zoloft so they can, you know, remedy their depression. The fact of the matter is, is 
you know, we do have to realize that a lot of like mental and emotional things just go along with the normal, uh, you know, wave of life, the normal flux of life. There is a fluctuation in times of our life that we are going to have ups and we are going to have downs. And this is absolutely normal. You, you know, you have to kind of analyze your life and you have to see if you're in a period of your life simply that you have more anxiety or that you have a bit of depression. You know, if somebody just died two weeks ago, it's normal that you're going to have depression. You don't need to go to the doctor and be prescribed depression medication because it's normal that you will be suffering a loss and that you have to, you know, digest, you have to process that loss. Anxiety is the same way. You know, people have a little bit of anxiety and they say, oh, you know, I went to the doctor, they gave me anxiety medication, I have, you know, bipolar and all of these things. A lot of the times, you know, these are situations in our lives that we are encountering at this particular moment. And that's why we really have to spend time in self-reflection, self-study, you know, meditation, so we can start to analyze these issues within our own lives and realize that, you know, they don't need medication, you know, at that point. The medication uh, most times will um, make the problem worse, especially on a long-term uh, long level. So uh, that being said, the medical um, system, you know, are you dependent on medicines? Are you, you know, have you become dependent on, you know, just simply eating whatever you want and knowing that you can take a pill for acid reflux or, you know, relying on the medical system and being a slave to the medical system is just a statement an external statement to the world that you're not willing to take responsibility for your own diet or lifestyle choices. And again, I say this, um, you know, this isn't addressing every single issue. I'm just saying this is for the majority of issues because the majority we can cure ourselves just by simply changing certain diets or lifestyles, right? If you have a, uh, a job that you work 80 hours a week, your boss yells at you every single day, you know, you go home, you have no time, you have like an hour to eat, you're skipping meals, this is a high anxiety situation. You don't need to go to the doctor and get prescribed anxiety medication. You need to change your lifestyle, you know? So we need to have a look at these things. Um, you know, getting out of the matrix requires taking responsibility for your own life and making changes. And the third one, which, uh, you know, kind of segues into what I just said is your job. And this is quite possibly the most difficult because, you know, some people have fortunate situations, like maybe they've inherited a house or they have a family with money where essentially they don't have to worry about an income where they can, you know, do their artwork, make their music, you know, and this is great for them. But a lot of people don't have these options. A lot of people do have to go to jobs. They don't have a situation, you know, a supportive situation where they can live for free or eat for free. Essentially, they, they actually have to work to procure the, you know, for themselves take care of themselves. But is your job taking all your time? You know, what are you doing with the money that comes in from your job, for example? And, you know, one way that you can kind of like reduce or kind of, you know, step a little bit out of that, you know, self-imposing enslaved controlling system is by working less. Well, how do we work less? Well, if you go back to number one and number two, you know, the materialism and relying on the medical system, if you start to reduce those numbers automatically, 
you require less money. You know, if you're buying less clothes, if you're buying less uh, gadgets, if you're buying less of these things, you automatically will have more money. And if you're spending less money on prescription drugs, you will automatically have more money. Therefore, you can work less because you don't need that extra money. And instead of getting extra money, then, you know, you, you could save the extra money or you could not work and have the extra time, which time, like I said before, is finite. You will not get it back. So that is why we have to treat it with respect and gather as much of it as we can, keep as much of our own time for ourselves as possible. You know, um, eliminate the cable TV and the TV altogether, which I've said in other videos. Car payments, eliminate car payments. You know, if you need a car, buy, you know, save up, you know, six or 700 euro or dollar and go buy a used car and, you know, fix it as it needs fixing instead of spending 600 a month for a car that is, you know, essentially devaluing every time, every, you know, day by day, essentially. Uh, stop going out to restaurants or, you know, stop going out for like a $5 frappuccino every day, you know? These are just little things that you can do to eventually start to get your own time back and get out of this system because the system, like I said, this matrix is, you know, a self-imposed prison essentially that we've created ourselves and we've become slaves to it we've become trapped by it and the deeper we are you know the deeper in we are the harder it is to get out we basically buried ourselves in a hole you know some people are making three or four thousand euro a month or three or four thousand dollars a month and they have like uh you know four hundred and fifty thousand uh, Euro mortgage, for example, this is like self-imposed slavery, you know, if you're going to make a purchase, make an investment, so you at least get some kind of, you know, return on your money, for example. So these are just, you know, a couple points I wanted to bring up, you know, bring up. I believe that how we're going currently, like it's going to be harder and harder to always get out, right? And some people will do very well. Some people, they they really prefer slavery, you know, and it's slavery. We are all slaves to a certain extent. You know, some people like to feel secure and like to have, you know, go to work and their work is done for them. But then they can't complain if their boss is yelling at them all day. They can't complain if, you know, they are purchasing their own television sets and, you know, wondering why they're anxiety ridden because they watch TV at the end of their work shift, you know, that, or they shouldn't complain. And, you know, I'm obviously making a judgment here. I, I don't know, you know. I don't know all the situations happening in everybody's life, but I'm personally saying that people that are getting themselves in deeper and deeper, essentially they have solutions that they can use to get themselves out, but they choose not to. You know, it, it lies in our own personal choice, but the options are there. and. You know, like I was saying, there, there's people that are in that are going to have a harder and harder time of getting out. And then you have some that are kind of on the edge. You know, they're not quite free, but they're really not deep in. For these people, I say, you know, keep working on getting out. It will happen eventually. You know, it'll, it'll take time like anything. And then others that are completely self-sufficient. If you're one that are, you know, if you're a person that is completely self-sufficient and not relying on any artificial man-made systems at all, you know, share your information with others, share this video, share your information, you know, try to help others that you see that are struggling to get out, you know, so we can all help each other to get out of this self-imposed prison. You know, there's a lot of people that really want out and they just, they don't know how to begin or who to turn to or where to go. 
But at this point, you know, the, the way that the world is going, um, you know, we have to be as self-reliant as possible. And especially if, you know, I believe that it's going to get worse before it gets better, right? Most things do get worse before they get better. You know, if you have the sniffles for a couple of days, it's not so bad at the beginning, but then it develops into, you know, the stomach flu, and then maybe you're even throwing up, and then you have a fever that breaks. So it gets worse before you feel better. And I believe that, you know, the next six to 12 months, I think it's, I personally feel like it's going to get worse, but I think it's going to get better at the end, right? So we have to see, I think there's going to be a separation of, you know, people that are in that choose to stay in and people that want to get out that are going to be out. And I think it's important that we keep our head, you know, a keep our head clear at this time and focus on solutions and focus on what we can do instead of what we can't do you know try to be as self-reliant as possible not requiring external assistance from governments or external assistance from broken medical systems or even trying not to support big corrupt mega corporations you know it's really the, the best defense that you have for any sanity and peace right now. And above all else, keep with your meditation. You know, that's going to be the best way to see these systems that, you know, have, we've created around us and try to start to detach ourselves from them and start to build a new life for ourselves as best as we can. Um, in this age of, you know, coronavirus and everything else that's going on. So I hope that helps. Let me know any thoughts, suggestions, comments. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. And namaste.